in our last session, we were talking about the bottomless pit. We were talking about a king. And let me review that for you. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Well, one of the things that make this seem that it's not really locusts is because according to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 27, they have no king. So these are demons. They're not real locusts. Now, the highest ranking angel is probably the one that they're talking about. They're not talking about Satan, and I don't believe it's about Satan. I believe it's about the high ranking angel from the abyss. Now, let me give you some reasons why this angel is not Satan. Satan is not bound in the bottomless pit. He unlocks the bottomless pit. He is called the God of this world. Satan is free to move and do as he pleases. He's not limited by being imprisoned in the abyss. The bottomless pit, consequently, he cannot be the king of the abyss. The king of the bottomless pit is an evil angel who serves Satan. Now, as we give an overview of what we've learned so far, Satan is the falling star. He is given the keys to the bottomless pit. He releases demons that are described as locusts that will torment his own people. These locusts are not natural locusts. They do not eat vegetation and they, they have a stinger that hurts but does not cause death. And they have a king named Abandon or Apollyon or Destroyer. Natural locusts do not have a king as we just read. One woe is past. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So that's only the first woe. So we, we got some more woes that are going to happen. Now we look at the trumpet, trumpet number six. Four demons from the Euphrates released and an army of 200 million will kill one third of the world's population. Then we move to woe number two. Revelation chapter 9, verse 14. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Hmm. Now these demons are so bad, they're kept in solitary confinement. They're not even in the bottomless pit. This is the worst. I mean, this is the terrible, terrible place. And these angels are very, very deadly. Now, where are they located? They're located in the Euphrates. And the Euphrates has dried up. And that was prophesied as well. What I think is quite interesting is that when it started drying up, there's a fortress down there. Now, you have to understand that the Euphrates ran through the Garden of Eden. So it's always had water in it. But here it looks like a prison. Could that be the prison where these four angels are stored until they're released during the tribulation period? That, my friend, is a very interesting question. Now, these are Satan's special forces. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. I mean, this is Satan's special forces. They will kill one third of the world's population in one year, one month, one day and one hour. Now, that's pretty specific. Be careful what you ask for, Bill Gates and others who desire population reduction because there will be quite a reduction at that time. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. That's 200 million men. Now, let me just say this. In the earlier part of the the messages on Revelation. I talked about the Preterist view. Preterist view believes that all these things happened in AD 70, around AD 70. Well, there wasn't 200 million men 
in an army at that time, and they have a problem with that. Now, the question is, will this army consist of super soldiers? Well, my friend, that's exactly what is happening today. What I'm about to show you is quite amazing because what you look at right now as a military is totally changing. You see, France and China are developing a biological engineered super soldier, according to the New York Post. Enhanced soldiers would be reduced to bionic men who run fast, do not need sleep, eat and drink very little, and can fight all the time. That's what the report says. It's called a new species is born, Homo robocopus. Now let's take a look at these super soldiers of the future. Bionic eyes being developed in Hong Kong. This gives users infrared and night vision, so they won't need night goggles. They'll have certain contacts or something that they place in their eyes that they'll be able to see at night. Not only that, but they have enhanced limbs. Look at this, exoskeletal legs. The U.S. Army has tested an exoskeleton which can be attached to the soldier's legs and can increase their productivity by 27 times. Also, these super soldiers will have synthetic blood that can help a soldier not get out of breath. They can run for miles and miles and never get out of breath. But even beyond that, they can stay underwater for hours with this new synthetic blood. How about the pain? They get shot. Are they going to want to, want to lay down and die? No. Pain immunity would allow soldiers to have their pain suppressed for 30 days. Then they have super hearing. The U.S. tactical communication and protective systems are smart earbuds which boost soldiers hearing to near superhuman. And then they have new brain microchips. France has been given the all clear to develop microchips to enhance soldiers brain power. So when you look at this and you say more brain power, yeah. It's like putting a computer in your head. They will know all the directions. They'll know all the things that you could put into a computer will be in that brain chip. And so they'll be able to communicate just like you talk on a cell phone. It'd be in their brain. You won't have to make a sound and talk to the headquarters and, and everything else, getting your orders. Could these soldiers be the soldiers designed to challenge God during the uh, Battle of Armageddon later. Then what do we see? Verse 17 even gets stranger. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Now you kind of understand why people don't like to read the book of Revelation because, first of all, to some people that'd be very scary, and if you're not saved and you're watching this video before the tribulation period, you need to get saved. If you're watching it during the tribulation period, that's what you're going to see. Now, with all that happening, then the scriptures tell us this. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. You see, as I've been looking through the book of Revelation, I see that God is trying to get people just to repent, just to tap out, if you will, and say, okay, I surrender. But they don't want to surrender. Even with all these things, you think, oh man, if I just had half of this stuff happen to me, I'm going, oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. But they don't do that. 
that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. So in essence, they worship these idols and it's because they worship these idols that they will not surrender. They, they think that these gods, the, the god of gold and silver, are these little charms. And as you see here, uh, there are many people in foreign countries uh, or even in America who worship like Hindus who use their idols and they pray to these and they believe that they are going to protect them. You know, I've been in China many times, 21 times, and it's not uncommon to ride in a car and they've got their little Buddha statue in the car. They're protected from anything by that little Buddha statue. And then God says, no, nope, that's not going to work. All your little statues are not going to change what I'm doing. You need to repent. Now, you have to understand, this is the mercy of God. God's not angry just tearing things up. God is simply trying to get people to say, I believe in you. I won't accept you. I don't want to die and go into eternity with without you. God would that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But here's what this says. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Hmm. You see, there are six hindrances uh, to a person and it causes them not to want to repent. The worship of devils, spirit worship, occultism. You know, occultists will think, oh, this is happening on the earth, wind, fire. And they will start doing their incantations and believe that their incantations are going to save them. But it doesn't. Then you've got, they worship idols like we just showed. And then they desire to kill these people are serial murderers. They love to inflict death and pain. You know, there are some people like that, that just love to inflict pain and misery on people. I couldn't imagine like the son of Sam and people that kill people and eat them. And I mean, it's horrible to even talk about. But some people are so addicted to this stuff, they won't even give that up. And then they're addicted to drugs. The Greek word for sorcery used here is pharmakion. That is where we get the root word pharmacy or drugs. And folks, we see that today. I mean, right now, we know that there's a problem with alcohol, right? But instead of solving that problem, they say, oh, let's legalize marijuana. And then next thing you know, right now in Oregon and stuff, they're trying to uh, legalize LSD and everything else. They will not surrender their drug addiction. And by the way, I tell you what, I've, I've known a number of people who are addicted to drugs. My own brother was addicted to painkillers. And there are many people who take prescribed drugs from doctors that actually they get addicted to and they can't get off of them. So they will take these painkillers or they'll take these drugs to try to solve the problem. And it doesn't work. They're sexual addictions. Well, I'll tell you what. They'll say, well, I'm a homosexual. I was born this way. Or they'll say, I'm, I'm a playboy. I'm not giving this up. I mean, it's so strong. The urge is so strong that they will be willing to die and go to hell. I remember years ago, um, I had a man and a woman uh, who supported our ministry quite heavily. And uh, I got a phone call from the lady and she said that her husband had left her and was living with another man and a woman. And I actually called him because I was going to that town. I got his phone number. I called him and invited him to the meeting. Well, he and the guy and the lady came to the meeting and they sat there and I preached the gospel. I told them about heaven. I told them about hell. They didn't move at all. But at the end of the service, that man came up to me and he said this. He said, Mr. Benoit, he said, all I can say is God is just going to have to kill me because I can't change. I, 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 this is just the way I'm, I'm going to live. I can't give this up. So he was addicted to sexual practices 
that he said, I will not surrender. As a matter of fact, there is a Greek word, implacable. It's found in Romans chapter 1. It says, I will not surrender. That's what the word implacable means. It's a military term that says, I don't care what happens, I will not surrender. In closing of this session, I'd like to teach you something very quickly. It's how to catch a monkey. How to catch a monkey. Now, what does that have to do with what you're talking about, Mr. Benoit? Well, the way you catch a monkey is you put grain or fruit or something in this jar. And when the monkey puts his hand in it, it's like this. But when he grabs it and tries to pull it out, he can't get his hand out of the jar. And he will just stay there seeing you coming and he will not release it. All he has to do is release it and run. But he's so greedy. He's so tied up in what he's doing. He'll hold on to that. See you coming. See that he's going to be captured. Bad things are going to happen to him. But he will not release that which he's holding on to. My friend, I'm afraid to tell you this, but some of you watching me right now, the reason why you will not surrender is you have, just like that monkey, you're grabbing sexual things, you're grabbing drugs, you're holding on to these things and say, I can't give these things up. I see the, the things that are happening. You've talked about the rapture and everything, and I do believe it, but I just can't give it up. Well, my friend, I hope that you are willing to give it up because if you don't, you'll spend eternity without God. And no one would I ever wish that upon you.